Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are studying the chapter Improvement in Food Resources. India is basically an agricultural country. So here farming practices uh, extends from very small farms to very huge and sophisticated high-tech farms. So the cultivable practices adopted depends upon the uh, ability of the farmer to invest into this process. So the more we give that is input, better will be our output. So based on this, there are three types of farming in India. No cost farming, that is no cost involved. Maybe one family is inheriting the land from its ancestors, a small piece of land. They are cultivating there uh, without using any extra uh, additional input into it. They are using maybe their cattle down there because it's a small uh, field and the uh, how family members are doing the farm labor and they are getting the yield. Uh, they are using it for their own on personal purpose and little bit they use for the next season as the seed for the next generation that is called a no cost farming then coming to low cost low cost means here uh, it's more or less same only but some uh, money may be spent in that maybe to get some high yielding variety or some fertilizers like that only whereas high cost farming is there where we are using all chemicals all machines and everything all high tech practices so that the output also will be very high Okay. So when we talk about the crop production management, we are actually discussing in which all ways we have to uh, nurture the plant or what are the requirements of the plant throughout its growth. So in the first part we saw crop variety improvement, what seeds to be selected to sow. Uh, that means we found the different qualities that we uh, selected, right? So the quality seed if you get, you are sowing it, but if you don't nurture it properly, the output will not be proper. So we have to nurture them. So there are three steps involved in uh, crop production management. One is the nutrient management, second is irrigation and third is crop pattern. If you take care of these three aspects very scientifically, definitely your yield also will be better. So we are now going to discuss nutrient management. Nutrients means the nourishment needed by plants like how we need nutrients plants also require nutrients but from where will plants get the nutrients we get from our food right but plants get from three different sources one is from air second from soil third from water so totally 16 nutrients are required by plants for their proper growth of this carbon and oxygen will get from air we know carbon dioxide is absorbed during uh, photosynthesis and uh, oxygen is produced after photosynthesis and also it is there available in the nature for respiration. So plants can get these two from air. Whereas water will give the hydrogen to plants. But rest of the minerals are uh, obtained from soil. Though in the soil they are present in the form of charged particles called uh, ions. Okay. So there are two types of or two categories of nutrients, macronutrients and uh, micronutrients. This is very very important okay out of 16 nutrients three are obtained from air and water then rest 13 divided into macronutrients and micronutrients if you understand the word meaning it's easy macro means big micro means small so nutrients which are required in large quantities by the plant for its growth that is called a macronutrients there are six nutrients which are macronutrients now how many left out of 13 7, 6 gone. Now 7 nutrients are micronutrients means they are required in very small quantities. Now we have to by heart the uh, nutrients which are macronutrients. They are usually any plant NPK is important. Nitrogen, phosphorus and uh, potassium. Then calcium, magnesium, sulfur. So which are they? Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur. These are the macronutrients. Now which are the 7 micronutrients? Iron, Manganese, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and chlorine. So all these minerals have their own specific roles in the plant growth. So if a plant is not getting these minerals properly from the soil, the plant will show some deficiency of this. This will result in or affecting the physiological process of the plant and also the plant uh, growth and uh, production that means reproduction also will be affected. If reproduction is affected, our yield also will be less. Farmer has to ensure that he is providing all these nutrients needed for the plants to the soil. 
That means he is enriching the soil or increasing the soil fertility. We can increase the fertility of the soil by either using the natural method called manure or we can go for the artificially or commercially prepared fertilizers like chemicals. So I will give you a small example uh, from our day to day life. Suppose you are eating fruits and vegetables every day in your diet because we get vitamins and minerals through the fruits and uh, vegetables. And when you are eating that, it's not only that they are giving us nutrients, but they are not giving in bulk, but they on a daily basis we have to consume to get all the nutrients. But at the same time, they contain a lot of fibers and other components which are helping in our digestive system and our proper functioning. Overall, that improvement is there in our body, those who are regularly eating fruits and vegetables in their diet. At the same time, think about a certain case where you are having some deficiency, now you are going for a multivitamin syrup. Okay, where you are taking the only the nutrients into your body, you are not giving any other uh, components including fiber which is helping in your digestive system. So your nutrient requirement will be met but at the same time overall improvement in the health will not be seen like how we consume the other but immediate result you will get. The same effect with the manure and the fertilizer. Manure is like your uh, normal balanced diet whereas Fertilizer is like the multivitamin syrup. You are giving only the nutrients. Understood? So manure when we add to the field, it is rich in organic matter because we are adding a lot of waste into it. Means lot of organic matter is in that. So it will make the humus in the soil and soil becomes so fertile. And it contains some nutrients also. It's not that in large quantity they are present but they are present in some amount. So it will take some time for the plants to show the results. So it's a slow process of uh, showing the improvement by the plant but ultimately or a long run uh, this manure will increase the texture of the soil. For example, if you look uh, there are different soils like a sandy soil or clay soil. We know that sandy soil the grains are so big that means uh, when we take it out in our hand and we pour it will free flow that is it has got a lot of air space in between but it cannot hold the water water will go down it is not holding so air is there but water holding capacity is not there but when you come to clay it has fine particles it will hold a lot of water but it cannot have air space in that because it is so close so plant growth needs both aeration and water holding so if we use a manure continuously in our sandy soil gradually it will become like kind of loamy soil the same way clay so that is it is increasing the water holding capacity as well the same way if i continuously add manure to my clay soil eventually it will develop the aeration also so we can improve the texture of the soil over a period of time that's the advantage of manure now how do we make manure or what is the source we use all the excreta of human animals and uh, farm waste etc so manure can be of two types depending on how we are producing it first is called a compost or vermicompost second is called a green manure compost or vermicompost means they are formed by decaying waste for example if you have a farm and you have a huge pit compost pit in one corner of your farm on a daily basis all the biodegradable waste like means the plant refuse after harvesting whatever parts of the plants are there or you remove some weeds from your field that you can put some vegetable peels after cutting at in the kitchen we can put leftover food we can put or animal excreta cow dung and other thing we can put in a different pit if you want and for producing biogas like that everything we can put in a pit that is called a compost pit so uh, daily we are putting it under it will uh, come to it will fill eventually so then we can put some soil over it and allow it to decompose another three, uh, three to six months depending upon the uh, size of the compost if it is a huge one it will take up to six months it will become uh, composed then we can take that and uh, just spread it in the soil uh, in the field so that it is good nutrients to the plants and also adding organic matter and uh, if this process is very slow, so sometimes uh, we can use worms to hasten the product. Means earthworms are used. We culture earthworms and put in this combo so that the process becomes fast. Because they break down the big uh, particles into small so that these microorganisms can decompose it faster. So such uh, composting using earthworms it is called a vermicompost.
Okay. Second method is called a green manure. Green manure means we are not preparing it separate. Suppose my cultivation is over. Next to two months, I cannot do anything in my land. So I am leaving it. And maybe after two, three months only, I am going to prepare my soil for the next cultivation. So during that free time, I am allowing just plants to grow or sometimes I prefer some plants like sunhan or guar like uh, uh, the plants which is called a cluster bee. Uh, it is a pea variety or a leguminous plant. So as a result what happens nitrogen fertility of the soil also will increase. So but here we are not growing it for getting harvest. We are just growing the plant. After three months when I am coming the plant uh, plants are grown completely everywhere. I am not going to pluck it. Okay, what I do, I'll just plow the field along with the plant so that the plant will get mixed with the soil. Then what we do, we add sprinkled water also, we irrigate the field, then uh, it will decay and it will slowly become a part of the soil. So the soil will be rich in nutrients including nitrogen. So that is called a green manure. Second type is the commercially produced uh, chemicals called the fertilizers to increase the fertility of the soil. So fertilizers are commercially produced nutrients. They have mainly three components in it, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, the macronutrients, the major nutrients. And they don't add any organic matter, they are just powder of these mixtures. They, we can just spray it, they are chemicals only. But it is quite expensive, so it's a part of high cost farming and it gives a good yield also because it ensures good vegetative growth. When you add fertilizers, since the plants are getting a lot of nutrients are ready made, they will grow very well. So you can see the plant looks so big and healthy. Okay, that's the advantage of fertilizer. When we are using fertilizers, we have to be little careful uh, because we have to see the proper dose. If a dose is excess, it can harm the plants or dry the plant. At the same time, excess can be washed off to the nearby water body and cause problem there. Also, we have to see the time at which we have to give the fertilizer. Means that not the daytime, the stage of the plant life and also pre and post application precautions. Sometimes before applying what we have to take care of or after application what should we think of. That is maybe immediately after application don't irrigate because everything will be washed off to the nearby water body. So that is creating another environmental pollution. So we have to be very careful by using fertilizers. Though it is ensuring immediate growth of the plant but in a long run it may damage the soil. It's not because it's not giving major nutrients. We are not adding any organic material to it. Right, only nutrients are given ready made like a multivitamin syrup. Can we survive on only syrups throughout our life? No. Once there is a serious deficiency, we can go for it. Otherwise, we have to maintain our health, eating proper diet only, right? The same way. Also, not only it is adding uh, organic matter to the soil, it will kill all the microbes in the soil which are useful to the plants. So, uh, gradually the soil quality is decreasing. So, if you intensely cultivate using fertilizer for a few years, then after that the soil will be useless. So considering all these aspects of uh, or side effects of uh, latest farming techniques, we have a new system of farming called uh, organic farming. Organic farming means with a minimal or no use of chemicals at all. That is instead of fertilizer, we only use manure. Instead of insecticides or pesticides, we can use the decoction of certain plants like neem or turmeric and all we use to keep away the insects. Also we use bio fertilizers, means we culture some uh, microorganisms like a blue green algae which can fix nitrogen and transfer them to the soil so that the soil fertility will increase. And with that healthy cropping system also if we practice, we can uh, successfully produce the result in organic farming. So hope you understood this part well. So the irrigation onwards will continue in the next video. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.